Let's add custom villagers to Minecraft. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses, such as tameable and rideable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles, and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. Oh, Ray, we found some back in Challenge with more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding custom villagers to Minecraft. So this is going to be basically a custom villager profession. And this is actually going to be more straightforward than you might think. However, as always, of course, sadly, there's like a couple of uh, caveats over here. But let's start in the tutorial mod package. We're going to right click a new package called villager. And instead of there, we'll make a new Java class called the mod villagers class. Now, in this case, we actually need to register two different things. For this, first of all, we're going to make a public static void register villagers method. This is just going to do tutorial mod .logger info, and this is going to be registering villagers for tutorial mod mod ID. There we go. And let's actually immediately call this method right here. So there's going to be mod villagers dot register villagers. And that is going to be great. And we're going to need a couple of helper methods. The first one is a private static registry key of type point of interest type. So that's going to be this one right here from net Minecraft world poi. And that's going to be the poi key passing in a string name parameter and then returning registry key dot of registry keys dot point of interest type and then a new identifier passing in tutorial mod dot mod ID and then a name. As always, of course, all of the code is available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository. The second helper method is going to be the point of interest type. This is going to be the register poi method and have a string name parameter and a block block right here. And this will return the point of interest type helper. This one right here from netfabric MC fabric. And that's going to going to call the register method passing in a new identifier. Once again, tutorial mod dot mod ID and passing in the name. Then after the first closing parentheses, one, one, and then the block. Let's import the block class over here. This is from NetMicro World Block, of course, and then no errors should be present. You can see that the one here is the ticket count and the one here is the search distance. The point of interest type overall is basically the workstation that the villager gets this particular profession from. And then the ticket count is how many professions can be taken from there. So if it's one, obviously, then you set down the block and then only one villager can actually take a new profession from that particular block. If you add more, then more could do that. And then the search distance should be how far away they have to be to get that particular profession. And for the profession, we also need a private static villager profession. This is going to be the register profession method with a once again string name parameter and then a registry key of type point of interest type. And I'm going to call this the type here in this case. This will return registry, making sure we choose net Minecraft registry. Very important. That register registries dot villager profession, then a new identifier tutorial mod dot mod ID passing in the name parameter after the first closing parenthesis. We then want to make a new villager profession, the first parameter of which is the name. And then we're going to do entry and then an arrow over here. And I'm going to say entry dot mattress key passing in the type right here. The parameter after that is the same thing, entry, and then I'm going to say entry dot matches key, passing in the type. Once again, after the first closing parentheses, we then wanted to make an immutable set dot of, and then another immutable set dot of, both of them empty, and the last parameter is going to be a sound event. So this is going to be sound events dot, and then you can, for example, take any sort of entity event for the villagers. So let's say work armor, for example, or there are other work events as well. So entity villager, work fisherman, librarian, whatever you maybe choose to do. Let's get the shepherd here, for example. That's going to be fine. And you also want to add another closing parenthesis. And there we go. So this is a quite a crazy method here in this case, but this is going to make this a little bit easier. So now we will get the point of interest, the registry key, as well as the villager profession. So this is going to be a public static final registry key of type point of interest type. This is going to be the sound underscore poi underscore key equal to the poi key method. I'm going to call this the sound poi here in this case. And we're going to have the actual point of interest. So this is going to be a public static final point of interest type. This is going to be the sound underscore poi. And this is equal to registering the poi for sound poi. And then mod blocks dot sound block here in this case. So the idea is that we're going to take the sound block and that sound block when it's set down, it's going to be a registered point of interest for villagers. So they're going to go to the sound block and they're going to get the following profession. That's going to be the public static final villager profession called sound underscore master equal to register professions sound underscore master. And then this is going to be the sound point key that we want to pass in there. And there you go. 
if I were to go to the point of interest types class, we uh, include the non-project items over here. We will be able to see all of the interest types from vanilla. And this will include the beehive and the bee nest. This is one of the things that a lot of people might want to make. So they want to make, oh, we want to make a, a beekeeper villager. That's all great and well. However, if a particular block is registered with a POI, in this case, the beehive and the bee nest, right? You can see they are both registered as a point of interest type already with a ticket count of zero. That means you cannot reuse that block. So you can't make like a second sound POI 2 over here with the sound block as well, because the sound block itself already has a point of interest type associated with it. So do keep that in mind. It is possible with a lot of mixing and stuff like that, but I really recommend you don't go down that route. Usually just make a custom block or a use a block that doesn't already have a point of interest type associated with it. Right, once that is done, we can now go to the en underscore US JSON file to, to add this one right here. So this is going to be the translation of the name of the sound master, right? So our, of our custom villager here in this case. And we also want a custom texture for the profession. So this is going to be under textures. We're going to make a new directory called entity. Inside of there, we'll make a new directory called villager. Inside of there, we'll make a new directory called profession. And then I will copy over the PNG. This is, of course, going to be available to you as well for download. And this is going to be the sound underscore master. And you can see this is a name given right here. So those have to match. And then there is one more incredibly important thing before we actually add custom traits to this villager because we want to go into the data gen and actually make a new custom class. So this is going to be the mod poi tag provider. This will extend the tag provider of type point of interest type. We're going to hover over this, implement the configure method, hover over this again, create constructor matching super, and we're going to choose the first one. We can delete the registry key and simply pass in registry keys dot point of interest type right here. And then in the configure method, we want to call this get or create tag builder point of interest type tags. So you can see this one right here from NetMicro registry tag. And this is going to be the acquirable drop site at optional passing in a new identifier of tutorial mod .mod ID, and this is going to be the sound poi. So what is this going to be? Well, the idea is that the acquirable job sites is a tag, and we have to add our custom sound poi to it. Otherwise, a villager will not actually be able to get the profession from that particular poi, and we're registering it optionally because I have not found another way to basically do it, to like specifically point to the registry key or the point of interest type. I'm unsure why this is the case, but using it in the optional, as long as this name right here matches this name right here, you're going to be totally fine. And we want to add this to the data generator here as well. That's as easy as duplicating this and then saying mod poi tag provider. Oh, and then of course we still need to make this public. So this is protected and then just making this public and then the error should go away. There we go. And with that, we can run the data gen over here. This is going to make us our poi tag. And then we can also add the trades to the villager. There we go, already done. And to add the trades to the villager, we're going to use exactly the mod custom trades class that we've used last time. And this is as easy as simply taking the register villager offers over here. And instead of passing in a vanilla villager profession, we're going to say mod villagers, that sound master, and that's it. Now, this is going to also be added to the sound master. Maybe we don't want an enchanted book here. Maybe we actually want like a, a new item stack of mod items dot, or actually, you know what? Mod blocks. Yeah, mod blocks dot sound block. And maybe we're going to get like two sound blocks here for the price of how about like some crazy like 32 corn? Why not? This works the same way. You can just add multiple trades at different levels over here. In this case, let's just add one for level one and another one for level two, just for the sake of argument. So maybe here you want a ruby staff, but over here is the only one because otherwise this doesn't really work. And then you're going to get back a ruby helmet over here, for example, because why not? It's kind of weird, but you know, that's okay. When it comes to the max users and stuff like that, highly recommended to just play around with this, but that's, that's literally it. That's going to be the custom villager added to Minecraft. So let's jump into the game and har our new villager. All right, fans, so back in Minecraft, as you can see, the villager already has the sound master profession over here and I can get myself some sound blocks and you can see as soon as this is going to be done, there we go. They upgrade and I can now give them a ruby sword for a helmet over here. I mean, kind of a weird trade, but why not, right? This is kind of cool. And there you go. That is how easy it can be to add a custom villager to Minecraft. And that's already it for this tutorial right here. Next time your ears will ring with some interesting sounds added in this video right here. Hope to see you there. So yeah.